Hello, uh, Drake Bellick here, and I am back to talk more Big Brother. Um, I just did a stream yesterday, and even so, a lot has, uh, has happened since then. Um, even I felt like by the time I uploaded my video to YouTube and shared it on Twitter, it was already basically obsolete. Just with how much went down. But, uh, you know, since my last chat, um, Frenchie did his nominees, and they've done the veto competition, and we have a veto winner. And there is some stuff that needs to be talked about. Um, I'll just wait a minute in case, uh, anyone decides to show up. Let me just double check to make sure that I I did tweet it. I I typed the tweet. I think it went out. It did. Wow, I already have two viewers. I looked down for a second and I have two viewers. Hello, both of you. Okay. So um let's well let's start with the uh the first big thing that happened since my stream yesterday afternoon. Um, so Frenchie, um, right off the bat, he was promising that, like, he was not going to nominate a woman or a person of color week one. But then he, uh, well, Christian won immunity, so that put a wrench in some things. But then he went ahead and got all buddy-buddy with Brent and Travis. Doc Cobran. Frenchie broke his promise to everybody except the young white jocks he was supposed to target. Yep, pretty much. He broke his promise to America. <laughs> but yeah, he said, you know... I mean, look, Christian won immunity, so he was off the table. Like, that. that's, that's fine. But there's still... Brent and Travis, and then he's just like, nah, I don't want to target these guys. And who does he put up? A woman named Alyssa, and a person of color named Kylan. And it's like, dude, you, you just, you, you're making too much of a mess. It's week one. You shouldn't be breaking promises already. Even better off if he had just STF you and not say anything when he first went in that house. Yeah. Exactly. Now, those were his two nominees. Oh, yeah, and, uh, Alyssa pointed out that, like, he told all the women that they were safe. Like, he wasn't gonna nominate them. And then he did. Because he thinks Alyssa is in a showmance with Christian, who was his initial target until Christian won immunity. And so, like, he's... he's punishing Alyssa for that, but they're not in a showmance. Like, they're on the same team as each other, that's as far as their relationship goes. And I'm just like, dude, you are making up something in your head. And it does not make any sense. Like, he imagined that they were in a showmance and targeted her for that because he couldn't get him. So he did that, and then it became clear that his target was another person of color, Derek X. The, probably the truest minority in the house, as he is the only fully Asian person in the house. Like, H Hannah's half Asian. She's half Indian, but still, like, yeah, Derek X is, like, the most literal definition of a minority in that house, because there is only one of him. He is the only Asian person in there. And, like, it's all this whole thing about how Derek X betrayed people, like, he stabbed people in the back. We still don't know what happened. Like, if there is any truth to this story, it happened when the feeds were down, and we just didn't get to see it. 
you know, the, tomorrow's episode, uh, maybe we'll get some more clarification. But, yeah, at the moment, it just, like, it doesn't make too much sense why... Why Derek X was was his target. And it's just, it's weird. Now, I did say on my stream yesterday that, that Derek X is not really impressing me too much as a player because he just seems more interested in hanging out with the bros. Like, he spends most of his time with Travis or Brent. And, like, he wants to target the women first. And it's like, being in that frat in college really uh, affected you, didn't it? But, um, let's, let's talk about Brent a little right now. Um, I do not like the way that he talks to, that he talks to and about the people of color in the house. Like, he is very condescending. He's, like, gaslighting. He's, he is a very unsavory individual and like i when i did my draft with my dad and my brother brent was my last pick it was down to him and frenchy frenchy was the one who got left out of our three-way draft because just we each picked five and i chose to leave frenchy out in favor of brent and i'm like this guy is just i don't like the way he's talking to and about certain people in the house. Like, he keeps going on to Derek X, like, to his face. Like, you stab me in the back. He has said that to him, like, 500 times already. And we still don't know what Derek X did. Even if we get a clearer picture of it on tomorrow's episode, or I guess today's episode, because it's now 12.01 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is where I am. But yeah, like... Even if Derek X did betray him, like, he just won't shut up about it. It's like, his whole, Derek, uh, Brent's whole personality at this point is telling Derek X that he betrayed him. And he stabbed him in the back. And it's, and I, I don't, I don't like it. It's just like the kind of thing where someone just wants to, force a lie onto the world and just force them to accept a lie something that isn't true and it's just it's not a good look and it hasn't been a good look when it has happened outside the big brother house but it's not just the way he talks to derek x that i have a problem with um he was talking to kyland after the veto competition and the veto is what i'm going to talk about next but, like, uh, Kylan did not win the veto. And, like, bug just flew into my head. <laughs> uh, Kylan is just talking to Brent, and Kylan's just like, don't really know what's going to happen now. I, I think that's what he said. It was, it was something, like, forgettable like that. But, what was memorable was Brent being like, why are you freaking out? And Kylan's just like, I'm not. And Kylan said he wasn't freaking out because he wasn't freaking out. Like, at all. Even though, like, he didn't win the veto. He was on the block. Like, he could have been freaking out, but he wasn't. He, he chose not to. And, like, I just... I don't know. It struck me as a bit of a microaggression, if I'm being totally honest. And... And I just... I don't know. He's just rubbing me the wrong way, repeatedly. And then, uh, for earlier in the day, he didn't say this to Derek F., but, um... I forget who he was talking to, but he said that, like... If Derek F. isn't reliable, we may need to trim the fat. Now, 
I know that trim the fat is an expression. I know that it means to, like, you know, cut off something that is not really helpful. But, um, it just, it's like, Derek F. is not a slim individual. And I think he's proud of that fact. Like, he, he's, he, he, Derek F. loves himself. Like, he knows he is fabulous, and he is fabulous, just, like, with his personality and his spirit. He, he's super fabulous. And just, like, the way that, you know, just the way Brent said trim the fat, I just found it kind of disrespectful. I feel like that's what he was getting at, because, like, Derek F. is just, like, the most positive person in the house, or one of them. He's got a good relationship with everybody. He's not making any waves. You know, he's just, like, he's getting in good with everybody, just so, you know, no one really wants to target him down the line. He's playing a good game, and you now out of nowhere, Brent's just saying, we may need to trim the fat. And it's like, dude, you, uh... Like, if, if that was the first time, then, you know, I might have looked past it, but you know, he's just, with all he's been saying about Derek X betraying him, it, it isn't a good look to me. And that's why I think there was a little bit of malice behind the comment. Milk, by the way. That's, that's the drink of choice for the evening. Okay, uh, I know I said I was going to talk about the veto next, but there, there is one other thing that I would really like to acknowledge. Um, Derek X and Travis. Now, look, I I didn't feel right with Derek X being uh, Frenchie's potential backdoor target. Just because it was completely against everything Frenchie had said before about not wanting to nominate people of color on week one. But Derek X... And Travis basically proved that they are recruits <laughs> because they didn't know how the veto worked. Like, I forget which one, but one of them asked the other, like, if the person who wins the veto uses it, can they be the replacement? And the other one was like, I don't know. I think Derek X asked if uh, the person who wins the veto, if they use it, if they can be the replacement nominee. And Travis said, I don't know. I think that's how it went, but I could be wrong. Either way, it's like, are you kidding me? Like, Big Brother, you have so many actual super fans that want to be on this show. Like, fans, period. Like, people who have watched a show at least a couple times. So, yeah, it's like, I don't know. That, that really annoyed me about Derek X. And that was why I was just kind of starting to be like... Maybe I won't be devastated if he goes, because I feel like Kylan and Alyssa were nominated for very wrong reasons. Especially Alyssa, with her being targeted because she's in a non-existent showmance with Christian. So I was just thinking, you know, I'd rather see Derek X go home over either of them. But, um... That is not going to happen, because Derek X won the veto. <laughs> like, this guy was, it's like he was put into the situation, he's like, well, I gotta figure this out. Oh, I have to win this veto to actually secure my safety this week? Sure, I'll go do that. And, and he did, and... Like, I, you know, I respect it, you know. Winning the veto is, like, it's a big thing. You know, winning any competition usually is a big deal, unless it was just, like, thrown to you. And with how little Alyssa and Kyland wanted to be on the block, I'm pretty sure nobody threw it, or at least they didn't throw it. He at least beat two people who were trying. So, you know, I, I at least respect that. And 
and uh, and now like it's just kind of going back and forth as to. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure he's gonna use it, but I'm still not sure who he's gonna use it on, and I'm still not a hundred percent sure who the replacement nominee is going to be. Like, I've heard a couple names already, and knowing how chaotic Frenchie has been so far, he could very well change his mind between now and uh, Monday morning when they do the veto meeting. At least that's usually when they do it. And, uh, you know, I, even though I think Alyssa is nominated for very questionable reasons, I think, I, I don't know, I just, I like Kyland more. I get better vibes from him, just as a player. And this might just be me hearkening back to, uh, how I said that Melissa was going to be the season's big flop. I mean, she hasn't been yet. Like, she's, she's been kind of basic. I don't really know her personality too much. Although, I did appreciate, um, when she said, uh, like, in response to Frenchie nominating her because she's allegedly an F-show answered Christian, she was like, who do you think I'm spreading my legs for on day three? That that was a pretty funny comment. I, I like that. And, and yeah, I, I do like Alyssa so far. I got nothing against her, but I, I like Kyland more, and between the two, I would rather the veto get used on him. Now, there have been whispers in the house amongst other people that they would like to see Travis go on the block, and so would I. And, uh, it's not for the reasons I thought. Like, I took one look at Travis, just from his picture, and was like, this guy's gonna be just like the Jax from 21. He's just gonna, he's gonna be just like Cody. He's gonna be just like Tyler. Like, he's just gonna be that guy, that good-looking guy that gets power early and runs the house, and everyone just lets him be, like, just running the show for the foreseeable future. But he isn't that. He is more like Annalise from 21. This guy is straight-up furniture. He barely says anything on the feeds. He barely appears on the feeds. Like, he, he's, like, not involved in any real game chats. Like, I thought this guy might be Tyler, but instead he's more like Jace from BB-17. Just this... This guy who thinks he's cool, and he's not really doing anything to prove that he's cool. And, like, not a lot of people in the house seem that interested in him, other than Frenchie. Like, Frenchie had a talk with him, and, like... He seems okay with them. I remember hearing Christian talking about how, like, if if Derek X uses the veto, then Travis would go up. But I still haven't really heard Frenchie say that. And, like, Frenchie has actually sort of hinted at that a woman would be the replacement. And it's like, again, th this is... You are now four betrayals deep. Like... The first two betrayals were putting Alyssa and Kylan up in the first place when you said that you weren't going to target a woman or a person of color week one. The the third betrayal is you saying that Derek X is your backdoor target. And then if he puts up a woman as a replacement nominee, then that's a, that's a fourth betrayal. You know, Alyssa, she's... She's Hispanic, so she is also a person of color. So you could argue that she is two betrayals in one. And Kyland is the third betrayal. The fourth betrayal is Derek X being the replacement nominee. So, so yeah, this would be the fifth betrayal if he puts up another woman. And if the woman he puts up is a woman of color? Six. That's six levels of betrayal. Yeah. Look, I am all for Frenchie making a mess. Because it is enjoyable to watch when people make a mess. But it's like he's... 
It's like he he was just duping America into liking him. And now no one likes him. Like even the the Facebook casuals, they they tend to not they tend to be a less um shall we say woke demographic of the Big Brother fandom. But uh even they're like, this guy is crazy. He's doing way too much. So he's just like, no one is on Frenchie's side. Like, some people are entertained by the chaos he has caused, but like, they're on the side of his chaos. They're not on the side of Frenchie. You know? And it's just like, you know, if he does come around and he does start looking at Travis as a potential replacement nominee, then fine. Then you know, I I think in that case he would probably Travis would probably go. I think he'd go over, especially Alyssa. And and, and Kylan, for sure. Because I know Kylan, he's in the, the cookout alliance, which is um which is Kylan, Derek F, Aza, Tiffany, uh Xavier. And Hannah, kind of. So, uh, yeah. They would definitely vote to keep Kylan, and that's five votes right there. They get Hannah, that's six. Well, actually, no, Hannah would be. Hannah would make it five, because Kylan can't vote. Um, but yeah, I, I think... I think either way, if Travis goes up as a replacement, then I think he would go home over either of those two. And I'm I'm not mad about that because, like, we thought Travis would be the kind of good player everybody hates, but instead he's just a bad player. <laughs> There's my uh, my sassy sip. You know I love to do that. I like to say something sassy and punctuate it with a sip of my drink. Um, I will say I have heard Claire mentioned as a possible, like, that's probably the name I have heard most, or at least, like, the most prominently. I feel like Frenchie said it, or someone near Frenchie said it to him, and that they, they put up Claire, that he'd put up Claire as a replacement, and I'm just like, why would you do that? Like, it, I will say, it'd be kind of like, uh, my initial thought for what Frenchie's strategy should be. Just nominate two of the other team captains, and if one of them wins the veto or has the veto used on them, then put up the third team captain that didn't win HOH. But, uh... You know, he said he wasn't going to nominate a woman week one. So I thought that Whitney and Claire would be safe. He did almost go for Christian, though, so, you know. This is just going to have to go down as one of those guess we'll never know moments. Dang it, I'm hiccuping. I only get hiccups when I'm streaming now. It's, it's, a, it's a problem. So, um, yeah, I just, I hope that Frenchie can come around to nominating Travis or Brent. Now, like I said, I don't like the way Brent is treating Derek X, the way he's talking to uh, certain people in the house. In his intro interview, Derek X said that he would use... I believe the term was unassailable logical reasoning. He definitely used the word unassailable. Which means, like, you, you can't fight it. So I'm hoping that he decides to talk to Frenchie about Brent, about how the way Brent is talking, and see if he can convince Frenchie 
that the way Brent treats people is gonna be a problem in the long run, and it might be best to just get him out right away. That would be pretty impressive. If Derek X can pull that off, then uh, he uh, he might be one to watch. And at the moment, he has one veto win. He won the first veto. That's that's not nothing. But if he can actually get to Frenchie and convince him to get out the person that is treating Derek X the worst of everyone in the house, then, <laughs> you know, Derek X, he could, he could become quite the fan favorite. Okay, so another thing about the veto I want to talk about. Apparently, not all the veto chips were in the box. Like, you know, they, they pull them out, and it's like whoever's name on it, whoever's name is on it, is just like, like that's who's in it. But I guess I heard there were only like six of them in the box. I'm like, why? I was just trying to think, like, what could this have possibly been? And then it, it hit me that like, maybe Christian won an additional power as part of his uh, immunity win. Like, maybe he got to take certain names out of the veto box. And, like, maybe he took out names of people that were really close to Frenchie. People that would just let Frenchie's plan go smoothly. And he just left in names like, like Travis and Derek X that would really throw a wrench in things. Actually, now that I think about it, I think Travis was uh, was picked by Kylan to compete. Like, Kylan pulled house guest choice. But, uh, yeah, that is very weird that there were only six chips in the box. Like, it should have just been... I feel like it should have been all 13 names that aren't HOH or nominees, and then three house guest choice chips. Just, like, you know, one of each. Because I know they've pulled multiple house guest choice chips in the past, haven't they? I feel like they have. I guess... Maybe just put one in, possibly. But yeah, that was... That was a weird thing to hear. That they weren't all in the veto box. And I'm just wondering if Christian had something to do with that. Cause like that's the only thing that makes sense, and a lot of people like I I put this out there on social media. People are like, why would Christian want to leave Travis and Derek X's name in the box? And I'm just like, Christian seems to know that he was Frenchie's target, and like Alyssa is being targeted because Frenchie thought they were a showman's. so he might have done it like just to because Travis or Derek X winning the veto would put a wrinkle in things. Especially Derek X. Because, like, he may have taken Travis's name out. I don't know. Travis's name didn't get picked. House Guest Choice got picked, and then uh, Travis was put in the veto competition. So yeah, that's just, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Otherwise, I don't know why they would leave any out. Unless it was part of someone messing things up. Um, Aza and Derek F. I love their friendship. Like, this is, like, something else I wrote down in my, uh, my memo on my phone. That's how I take my notes of things I want to talk about. Um, I love the friendship they have, and I love the the gameplay that they talk with each other. Um, like, they were talking about how if one of them won the veto, like, they... Derek F. was like, well, we're going to use it, right? We're going to save Kylan. But then Aza was like, she really thought ahead and was like, we'd have to be careful doing that, though, because it could show our cards. And Derek F. was like, that's actually a really good point. 
Like, he, he appreciated her thinking that far ahead. And I, I did, too, you know? Like, that's, that is smart gameplay. Because you don't want any decision to come back and bite you. And we've seen that happen. And just with the amount of choices Frenchie has made, and promises he went back on, some of these choices, they could very well come back to bite him soon. I mean, I don't really see him going next. As much as everyone's like, well, clearly Frenchie's going home next. I don't know about that. I just don't see it, to be honest. I I feel like Frenchie's going to be here for the long haul. I feel like he's going to be here Final Five, even. Because it just doesn't seem like anybody really wants to target him. Like, yeah, they, they talk about him and how crazy he is, but very few people have been like, Oh yeah, next week I'm just going to take him out. But like, everyone just still wants to work with Frenchie. Like, and Frenchie still wants to work with everybody. Like, he's making alliances with everybody. He literally made an alliance with Kylan after he nominated him. Like, really? Kylan, you don't actually trust him, do you? This guy, like, he nominated you. He's not on your side. As much as you would like him to be. So. Yeah. I just. I feel that. They're all just sort of accepting Frenchie. And his craziness. And. I think he's going to go far. I don't know why. I'd be looking at him like you're insane. I'm going to take you out now. Like, the only person I could really see targeting Frenchie if they win power is Alyssa. That's about it. That's all I could see at the moment. Okay, so uh, this was something I did on my last stream. Um, I... After I'd been talking for a while about the things I wanted to talk about, I went and looked at updates and just basically reacted to them live. I mean, if you know me from YouTube, you know that I came up doing... I say came up like I'm, like I'm a big deal. Let me rephrase. I, I haven't earned that comment. Um, I, I started doing my thing on YouTube doing reaction videos, and I still do them to The Walking Dead and associated shows, well, one associated show, and, uh, and, you know, just, like, doing reactions to what's going on on the feeds, I was like, I think, uh, I think this might be an interesting thing for me to do. Oh. I literally just found out that um, a Whitney stan on Twitter just made fun of me for having a double chin. That's nice. Love that. Okay, cool. Oh! And she liked her own comment. Well, they like their own comments. I, I don't know if it's a he or a she. But, uh... Okay, moving past that. What else is going on? Let me just get to the update page. BB updates. By the way, uh, what was what was this person's name? I just want to give them a nice little shout out. Um, at Winner Whitney on Twitter. Um, just because I here's how it started. Like, okay, let's yeah, let's just talk about this because I'm I I want to talk about it. 
at Winner Whitney said, just send Kyland home already. And someone else said, no, we heart Kyland. And then Winner Whitney was like, who's we? And I said, I'm part of the we, because I like Kyland. And then when he responds with, is your double chin part of it as well? What about your misogynistic comments? I haven't said any. I make it a point to avoid that kind of thing. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? But yeah, sure. Um, so here's a fun fact. I had no opinion on Whitney up to this point. I, none. Zero. She's just kind of there, doing her thing. But you know what? I'm officially saying it now. I hope Whitney loses. I'm rooting against her, officially. So yeah, good job, Stan. Good job. Way to support your favorite. Now, moving on. I mean it this time. Okay, well, Big Brother Updates hasn't updated in two hours. That's cool. Except it isn't. I, I usually love Big Brother updates, BB updates, but uh, they're just, they're not, they're not doing a lot this season. I'm just trying to find out anything juicy that's going on right now. Apparently, Frenchie's acting as if he's a permanent head of household, according to one person. Apparently, his target is changing with each house guest he talks to. Frenchie. He's just, like... No one... No one knows what he's doing. And it's making for entertaining content, but it's, like... He shouldn't have made the promises he made. Oh, apparently Frenchie's uh, Twitter account is temporarily restricted. I don't know what that's about. <sighs> Frenchie's saying, I originally didn't want to nominate any women. Derek X. Men? Frenchie. Women. <laughs> Like, he just, he can't, he can't keep his story straight. Well, I mean, I think, well, that, that actually is true, but, like, he can't keep it straight, so no one believes him. Oh, and uh, something else happened. There is uh, officially an all-girls alliance now. It is Tiffany, Claire, Brittany, and they were going to bring in Aza as well. And uh, I'm I'm okay with it. But um, the thing is, like, Brittany, she seems to be, like, fully on Frenchie's side. And, like, she's she's with him. Period. And and I've seen some people that are worried that she's gonna expose the alliance to them and get them taken out. 
the uh, the the Nicole Franzel comparisons have started. But I mean, she hasn't done it yet, and it happened earlier in the day. Like it happened probably twelve hours ago, and she hasn't gone to them yet. So you know, let's see. Yeah, there's a... Uh... It's nothing too much going on. Like, it's a lot of different stuff that people were talking about, but I don't know. Like, I don't know what to really talk about, because it's, like, not much consistent stuff. I was not picking my nose. I was scratching. Oh, well, apparently, that girls' alliance I was just talking about, they scheduled a time to meet up to name their alliance. Yeah, all I'm getting is that Frenchie's still doing a lot. He's saying a lot of nonsense. And I'm just wondering if he can really keep up all the stories he has told, because I just, if I were in that house, I wouldn't trust him. Maybe I'd tell him I trust him just to, like, be nice, but I feel like I'd be talking with other people to try and work out a way to get him down the line, because he is so all over the place. Um... And uh, I think uh, I think that'll just about do it. I guess maybe I'll I'll check one more time to see if PV updates has just so happened to you know update in the last few minutes since I've been talking. No, it hasn't. It, that has happened before. Like I'll just I'll look and I'll be like, well, they haven't updated in a while, and then just almost like out of habit, I'll check again, like. Two minutes later, and there have been like three updates since then. <laughs> Day four, and I'm already addicted to learning about what's going on. Oh, okay. Here's here's one. Um, Derek F. said that Victor was hot before Nicole Franzel stole all his flavor. <laughs> that's, uh, that's true. I mean, Victor does look like he has been absolutely de-zested, you know? Like, he doesn't even look like himself anymore. Like, he doesn't look like he did on BB-18. Like, not even just the fact that he got a haircut and shaved. Just, like, you know, structurally, like, facial structure, it somehow looks different. Like, did... Like, we know that... That Franzel forced the haircut and the shave on him. But, like, did she force plastic surgery on him, too? <laughs> Alright. Well, that'll do it. Um, this stream was, uh, not planned, but I've been talking almost 45 minutes now, so... That's pretty good. I was just gonna... Play, uh, you know, I, I do stream video games too. I was just gonna stream Red Dead Redemption 2 tonight, but there was too much going on and I just had to talk about it. And, uh, thanks, Doc Cobrin, for joining the chat. I don't know if you're still here. It says I have one viewer, so if that's you, then thanks for sticking around. And if it's not, then to my one viewer, thank you for sticking around all this time. Uh, yeah, th this, this season. It, uh, it's been messy. Like, Frenchie's been making a mess, and then his target won the veto. 
and now he has to make a bigger mess. And I can't wait. So, yeah, let's uh, let's see what the future holds. For now, I'm gonna call it a night, and uh, peace out.